Hi guys, welcome back to Bok Bok Bouquet. Today is going to be a full comprehensive guide on everything that goes into raising little baby chicks into the happiest, healthiest, full grown egg laying hens. I grew up on a chicken farm and have brooded thousands of chicks and we hatch and brood chicks monthly all year round. So if you're a new chicken owner, today's video is going to be packed full of information. I'm going to answer questions that you didn't even know you had and we're going to go into every minor detail and I'll give you all my tips, tricks, and hacks. Raising baby chicks and chickens is actually very easy and this video is going to be far beyond brooder basics and we're going to talk about raising baby chicks in the most natural way possible based off of how a broody hen would raise her chicks. And if you don't know what a broody hen is, broody is when a chicken gets the hormonal signal to want to hatch and raise baby chicks. So that's why you call the receptacle or the housing that you raise the baby chicks in a brooder. And you're gonna wanna have that set up before you bring the baby chicks home. So when you're gonna order or you're thinking about raising baby chicks, maybe consider the time of year. Do you wanna have them brooded inside or do you wanna have them brooded outside? If you're ordering chicks online through a hatchery, you may notice that if you order in a cooler month, they make you order a larger batch of chicks because they'll keep each other warm in the shipping box. Once the warmer months start to happen, you'll notice that the chick minutes Minimum goes down to three on some hatcheries where you can get as little as three baby chicks in the mail because it is warmer. When selecting your baby chicks, you can get straight run, pullet, or cockerel. Straight run means it's a random mixture of male and female. You don't know what you're going to get. Pullet is a female chicken that is not of egg laying age yet, and a cockerel will grow up to be a rooster. And if you ordered your chicks online and they're going to come through the mail, your local post office will call you when they arrive. They don't deliver them to your door. You go pick them up. As soon as you get that shipping notification, I recommend that you call your post office, give them your name and your number, let them know that you're expecting them. They'll call you anyway because they know to get those live birds out of there they want to make sure they get to their home as safely and quickly as possible but I always think it's a good idea to kind of get in their head already let them know that you're anxiously awaiting your birds so they can just call you as soon as possible baby chicks can survive up to three days in the mail because their last step of hatching they have an umbilical connected to the egg yolk and they absorb the yolk right at hatching and that is their food reserve so when the broody hen is hatching all of her baby chicks they don't all hatch at the same time so they can survive off this egg yolk reserve while their brothers and sisters hatch around them and then the and takes them out for their very first sip of water and their very first bite of food. Pretty cool, huh? If brooding outside, make sure that your fencing is small enough that a baby chick can't fit through there because other chickens will kill baby chicks, barn cats, dogs, many things will want to try to make an easy meal out of them so you want to keep them safe. If brooding inside, our dog is our predator so we put our brooder up on a table where she can't reach or we just close the door and don't allow access to her to that room at all. And make sure you baby proof your brooder as well because if there's an accident waiting to happen, a chicken is the one that's going to find it. Don't leave small gaps in between objects because if the chick gets startled or scared and tries to rush through there and gets stuck or trapped it could get crushed so when you're selecting your brooder if you're gonna have a small brooder be prepared that they will outgrow it quickly and you're gonna need to upgrade them into a larger brooder or you could start out with a larger one even if your brooder is on the smaller side it still needs to be large enough that the chicks can be under their heat source and that they can escape it when they need because like I said with the broody hen the chicks are under the hen for warmth but they're not always under her they venture out some sometimes forage and feed and drink water and then they go back under her when they want the heat so the chicks shouldn't be constantly under the heat they should be able to go enjoy their heat source leave it comfortably go eat their food drink their water and you do not want their water to be warmed up by the heat source the water and the feed should be far enough away that it isn't getting warmed up by the heat source and don't overcrowd your brooder raise an appropriate amount of chicks to the size brooder you have because if you have too many chicks that they all can't fit under the heat source at once then they're going to get chilled and they're going to start piling under it to get that warmth and that can lead to crushed dead baby chicks. So make sure if you are brooding a large batch of chicks that you have multiple heat sources available to them so they can all comfortably enjoy the heat source. And when selecting your heat source there are a few options available to you. There are radiant heat plates which are a great safe option but they're not meant to be used if the ambient temperature is below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you want to brood outside in a cooler winter month that may not be the best option for you. The other option is the traditional red heat bulb heat lamp. There are some dangers to it. They can be a fire hazard so you have to make sure if you are using them they are properly secured and make sure that no flying animals like grown 
chickens can fly into it and unsecure it. Make sure that it is nowhere near close to your bedding or the rubber on the toe because it will melt the rubber and it could ignite the bedding. But if you are brooding chicks inside in a rubber tote, there is no need that it should ever be close enough to melt or burn anything because they get very hot. So it'll be far enough away that there should be no danger of melting or burning. Whatever heat source you are using, make sure that you bought an extra. So if you're using a radiant heat plate, make sure that you have another one on deck just in case equipment failure happens and it goes out or have a heat lamp as a backup. If you have a heat lamp, make sure you have two fixtures, make sure you have two bulbs because if that bulb goes out and you don't have another one and all the stores are closed, your chicks will be in danger. They need heat. So always have extras just in case. Baby chicks just need heat supplemented to them, not light. So if you're using a radiant heating plate, you don't need artificial lighting over your brooder. Just let them have a natural day. My favorite way to brood baby chicks is I like to do batches of 10 or 15 chicks at a time in a Rubbermaid tote inside of our house. But if I'm going to brood up to 50 chicks at a time, I brood them in the barn outside. So that's why I would do it in a warmer month where I wouldn't have to worry about maintaining the temperatures that baby chicks need because in the baby chicks first week of life, they need to be anywhere from 95 degrees Fahrenheit and each week of life after you minus five degrees Fahrenheit. So by the time they're six weeks of age, they can comfortably handle 70 degrees Fahrenheit. You could use a thermometer if you like, but I don't want you to become too obsessed with reading that they start ignoring your baby chicks needs our hack is we use a two by two attached to the table we have our brooder on and we start slowly raising the lamp the weaning process pretty much begins immediately you're gonna keep paying attention to your baby chicks behavior and raise it to make sure that they are constantly comfortable at their heat level paying attention to their needs and listening to what the baby chicks are telling you can actually make them feather out faster we have them used to our room temperature and 70 to 75 degrees in our house by the time they or four weeks of age we don't even have the lamp on them inside our house at all baby chicks need heat but they will tell you exactly how much they want if you notice their behavior if it is too hot they'll be getting as far away as possible as they can away from the heat source and if it's too cold they will be piling under it trying to get that warmth and when it's just right you'll notice that they'll be just perfectly peacefully napping on the outer rim of that light a chicken's internal body temperature is around 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Once they are fully feathered, they can regulate their own body temperature if properly weaned. You can't just throw them into a temperature they aren't used to because that could be catastrophic to their health. Just like seasons change, get animals in the wild used to their climate's temperatures. We wean our chicks to handle room temperature when they are one month of age, and I'm gonna show you how we do that. These chicks are spending their very first night outside, and they can be out here comfortably in 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight our low is in the 40s, so we will only be turning on their heat at night. From now until they are two months of age, I'm gonna show you how we completely wean them off heat where they can fully live outside without any heat source. Now that we're getting our totes set up and our chicks are here, let's talk about bedding. With newly hatched chicks fresh out of our incubator, sometimes I'll put paper towels down for their first 24 hours only because it gets too messy after that. I'm too much of a helicopter mom and I wanna just remove every paper towel after there's one little turd because I don't want them to peck it or something. I wanna tell you guys about the king of bedding options, Eat On Hemp Shavings. We've been using them for over a year and right away when you open the bag, you'll notice this beautiful herby aroma. It has way less dust than other pet bedding options and it's super absorbent. We actually go the entire brooding process one month in this tote without changing out our bedding. You can never do that with pine shavings. Within like two days or a week tops, you're gonna have to completely clean it out and start over because it smells so bad. This smells good. Our brooders never stink and we do the deep litter method and we just, as we see fit, depends how many chicks you have and how big your brooder is, but whenever we notice little turds at the top, we just mix it up with our hand and then just keep adding more bedding on top. Hemp is one of the most sustainable plants on the planet and so you can feel good about what you're purchasing. It's made in the USA and if you have a compost pile in a garden it is biodegradable. There's no herbicides or pesticides. It's less acidic and it breaks down faster than other pet bedding options. And if you guys want to try Eat On Pet and Pasture, you can use code BOKBOK at checkout. We'll link it in the description below and save some money. And if you used hemp shavings before, let us know what you think because so far everyone we've talked to feels the same way we do. There's no going back guys once you try this. There's no going back. 
And if you do want to use pine shavings, that's fine. And if you want to use cedar shavings, don't. Cedar fumes are toxic to chickens. They have very sensitive respiratory systems, so that's a big no-no. And that's why I love Eat on Pet and Pasture because there is so much less dust, which also can damage their respiratory systems. If y'all have raised baby chicks before, you know how much they love to kick shavings into their feeder water. With this fence frame hack, it is such a game changer. You'll have the cleanest brooder possible, and we'll link below the video on how you can make one of these yourself. Other options are to put the food and water on a brick or a plank of wood or you can even hang it. I used to do this in the past and it never really worked out for me. So be prepared to be cleaning the water at all times. They should never be drinking dirty water. Since you are the broody hen and your baby chicks have never seen water before, you're going to have to show them it. How we do this is as soon as you get your baby chicks home, dip their beak into the water and then watch them swallow. Then monkey see, monkey do. I dip all of the chicks' beaks, but they will be watching each other drinking and realizing, ah, I like this. We like to use a quail waterer. The rim is very small. Baby chicks can drown easily in the traditional large chick waterers. So some people use those and put rocks or marbles in there so they can't drown. We still prefer the quail waterer because it takes up less space in the brooder and it prevents dirty poopy feet from stepping in their water. And make sure that when you put your water in there, it is completely level because if it is tilted on one side, the waters are gravity fed and they could slowly keep leaking out and make a mess in your brooder. If the baby chicks are under travel stress, if they came through the mail or from your local feed store, their very first batch of water, I like to mix electrolytes in it. And then the second day, plain water. The third day, probiotic. The fourth day, plain water. And then so on. And if they hatched home from my incubator, I don't do the electrolytes. I just let them go straight to plain water. Maybe their second or third day, I'll put some probiotics in there. The probiotic and electrolyte packets from Save a Chick mix into one gallon of water. So if you have a quart reservoir, that'll make you four batches. They should be mixed fresh daily. Here's some different feeder options and I'll tell you what I like and I dislike about them. When I hatch my own chicks or I get chicks in the mail, they have never seen food before. So I like this style feeder for their first week because I can sprinkle the food at the very top of it. They can see it easily and they can go peck it and then realize the rest of the food is right there. If I get chicks from the local feed store, I'll immediately go to this style feeder because they've already been eating and this one prevents a lot of waste. The way the feed is placed in there, they can't really flick it out with their beaks. This style feeder is good if you're brooding a large batch of chicks outdoors but it is very wasteful because they like to play with their food and they'll sit there with their beaks and they'll flick it all out and it'll all end up in your bedding. I use this style feeder from week one to week four of age. Your brooder may look different than ours and that's okay. There are many right ways to do things. Baby chicks need to be fed chick starter feed and when you're at the pet store picking up your chick starter you'll notice that there is medicated and non-medicated chick starter. The medicated chick starter isn't antibiotics. It is medicated with amprolium which is for coccidiosis. And the medicated chick starter will not treat coccidiosis, it is merely a preventative. So you shouldn't feed the medicated chick starter if your baby chicks were already vaccinated for coccidiosis. And if you do get coccidiosis, it will not treat it. You need to have Corid enabled to treat it, which is the amprolium medication. And it is good to have in stock in your first aid kit. No one can tell you what to feed your flock. I have never actually had coccidiosis in my own flock, so I do not choose to feed medicated chick starter. I just choose to have Corid in stock, if so ever, coccidiosis rears its ugly head at me. And coccidiosis can be more prone in areas that are wet and humid. You may want to feed medicated if your flock has had a history of coccidiosis or if you're brooding larger batches of chicks. The choice is up to you. So amprolium is a thiamine blocker and that is what coccidios coccidiosis needs to multiply in the chicken's gut is thiamine. So when it blocks the thiamine, it stops the coxy from reproducing. Well, thiamine deficiency in chicks can lead to stargazing. The baby chick's med can kink back, wry neck, and that is something I don't want in my own baby chick. So there's a give and a take with both sides of it. I personally choose to not feed medicated chick starter because I do not want to worry about a thiamine deficiency and I just make sure I have Corid in my first aid kit fully stocked. We feed our baby chicks scratch and peck feeds. You'll notice I'm wearing this shirt. And their motto is, you are what your animals eat. It's an all organic feed. And they just came out with the new chick starter crumbles. 
It is full of all the nutrition that your chicks need. They use grub-based protein, which is the protein of the future. It is super sustainable because they divert waste from landfills to grow the black soldier fly larva. And the insects are a huge part of a chicken and any bird's natural diet. So it is the best way to feed your chickens as nature intended. Coccidiosis is probably the number one killer of baby chicks. So you need to have that stocked in your first aid kit to be prepared. But you need to have a first aid kit in general if you're gonna be raising chickens. This one from MyFavoriteChicken.com, it's our favorite online chicken retailer, has a lot of essentials in it. But if you wanna see a video where we go fully in depth to everything that we keep in our first aid kit, go check out this video right here so you can be prepared for any sort of emergency that can arise. Indicators of coccidiosis would be tired, hunched, listless looking chicks, a rapid rate of death, or foamy or bloody looking stool, most commonly spread from poo landing in their waters. But because we are using a quail waterer rim in conjunction with the fence frame and our eat on hemp shavings and we're not overcrowding our brooder, that shouldn't be a problem for you at all. Make sure you dedicate time to be checking over your baby chicks. Something you're gonna look out for is a condition called pasty butt, and that is when poop gets stuck to their butt, and if it piles up too much, it can leave them unable to defecate, and they can go toxic and die. So you're gonna be checking their butts and removing any of the poo. If anything gets stuck there, you just soften it with warm water, never rip out their fluff, and just remove the poo, pat dry. You can use a blow dryer on low if you wanna dry them off. So think of your new job title as baby chick butt inspector, because you're gonna be checking those butts. They're more common in chicks that are got from your local feed store or chicks that are shipped because they're under stress. It is not as common in chicks hatched at home under an incubator or broody hen, but another thing that can cause pasty butt is too hot of brooder temperatures. This is the behavior you'll be looking for while weaning the chicks off of heat. They will be distancing themselves from the heat source and at this point you're going to want to lower their temperatures by raising your radiant brooder or your lamp. They're telling you that it is too hot in there, so start lowering their temperature for them. Some behaviors you might notice from your baby chicks is they look dead when they're sleeping. So when they're laying there, just check to make sure that they're breathing. That's just how they look when they sleep. You may also notice that they'll stretch one leg out and one wing out when they're really enjoying the heat. Yeah. And you might notice that they start burying themselves and shuffling up the, the bedding with their feathers. And that is called dust bathing. These are all behaviors that adult chickens do. And it kind of just amazes us that nobody taught them that. And it's just natural instinct to do it. It's like, how do they know? We've also noticed that chicks hatched at home in our incubator are generally more friendlier. When we walk by the brooder, chicks that were shipped to us will usually like wince, flinch, or be afraid and run and peep. Whereas chicks that we hatched don't even make any sort of movement at all. They're very friendly. All chicks will grow up to be really friendly chickens, but we do notice the ones that we hatch are friendlier right from the get-go. To make your baby chicks friendly, spend time with them. We talk to our baby chicks, baby talk to them in the brooder. We like to cuddle them on our lap, especially at night while we're watching TV on the couch. Just pet them, but make sure that when you're putting your baby chicks back in the brooder, you wash your hands when you're done handling the baby chicks. Now that your baby chicks are a couple weeks old and you love them so much and you happen to go to your pet store to get some more feed and you see more baby chicks, you might be tempted to buy them and combine the ages, but that's not really recommended. The little baby chicks are still very fragile and wobbly and your two week old chicks are going to be kind of big and mighty next to them and they could easily trample them in the brooder. So if you do want to buy more chicks, I recommend that you separate them into two separate brooders. Once the new little chicks get like a week or two into to them you could combine brooders maybe start off with a fencing in the middle so they can see each other take it away and notice their behavior if the bigger chicks are just too big for the little chicks and they're trampling them separate them immediately they need to be raised in separate brooders but when they're about a month old you should be able to combine them just fine chickens don't have a stomach like me or you they actually need to eat little rocks commonly called grit to be able to digest their food they store it in their crop and that's what breaks down the food they eat if they're just on chick starter they don't really need grit yet but once you start introducing new treats they're going to need grit to be able to break down their food what I do is not an exact science is I just mix like a cup of it in between like three or four cups so their chick starter here I just roughly mix it around in there so I start introducing the grit into their diet it's good for a chicken's immune system to start introducing new stimulus to them introduce new environments to them so if it's a nice beautiful day we take our baby chicks outside to scratch around in the dirt and start eating little pieces of grass and vegetation and it's gonna be great for building up their immune system and getting them used to your ground and your environment 
Now that our baby chicks are two weeks old, we're gonna upgrade them to this other feeding frame. Instead of the one by two laying flat, it's up on its side so it's a little higher. Now that our chicks are a little taller and a little more rambunctious and messier. At this point, they're gonna have a bunch of wing feathers developed and they could fly out of your brooder and if you have a dog, that's a huge problem. So we put a lid on there. You can just fashion any sort of lid. Make sure it is open fencing because they're gonna need good ventilation. The baby chicks are gonna be creating a lot of dust. You're gonna notice a lot of little fluffs flying in the air and when the baby chick is actually growing in its little adult feathers you'll notice that their original baby chick fluff is at the end of it that's because chicks actually go through mini molts whereas adult chickens molt once a year baby chicks go through many versions of it as they keep getting their adult feathering from three to four weeks of age you're gonna notice a lot of the same maintenance I'm gonna spray off this frame and wash it as it needs to I'm gonna be maintaining my eat on deep litter method and I'm going to be refilling their food and water as needed. You're going to notice that your chicks are a lot bigger, they have a lot more feathers and they're starting to take up more space in that brooder. At this point we almost have them completely weaned off the light. We have them with no light during the day and we just have our window open and the light on at night so they can start getting used to cooler temperatures. The more time you spend with them the friendlier they're going to be and the more that you keep bringing them outside and getting them used to all these different environmental stimulus the healthier their immune system is going to be. Now that our baby chicks are four to five weeks old, we're going to move them outside. And if the temperature stays above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, they don't need any heat supplemented to them. And if we're going to introduce them into one of our flocks, we have them grow up in this grow up pen side by side to our flock because that way they already start getting used to each other and establishing their pecking order. And if you want to know how to build one of these easily yourself, we have a video on it right here. They come in handy as a broody pen, as a grow up pen for baby chicks, and as a hospital pen if your birds get injured or sick. So there's many uses for them. And if they're birds that we're breeding or hatching or selling, they go in this here aviary, because can you believe it? Not everybody wants to go through all these steps of raising baby chicks. <laughs> At this stage, we upgrade them to this larger feeder and water. We prefer these ones with the legs because it keeps them very clean. And since we're moving our chicks into a new environment they're not used to, that could stress them. So at this time, I'm going to mix electrolytes into their water again. So over the course of our baby chicks being five weeks old to two months old, we're gonna start slowly weaning them off the heat at night. Because our low is in the 40s, we're gonna have that on for them, but we're gonna be slowly raising it. Eventually, you'll notice that your baby chicks aren't even sleeping anywhere near the heat source and you can completely turn it off and it is no longer needed. At this age, we start introducing new treats to them. Baby chicks can be very weary of new things, but once they start to eat it, they're gonna love it and that can be one way you can win them over and make them more friendly. We like to train them to eat out of our hand and it really makes them super friendly birds. Make sure that your grow out pen and your outdoor brooder is large enough because if they get in a cramped space and they get too bored they could start cannibalizing each other and feather picking. I've actually been to bad farms before where I thought the living conditions were atrocious and gotten chickens where were in these tiny pens and of course they had no tail feathers and they were balded on their necks. They need to be in a big enough space so they don't decide they want to start ripping out each other feathers. Look how much space these little babies have in here. They can run, play, do whatever they want and have healthy living conditions and that way poo doesn't build up and create an ammonia problem either. And you're going to want to keep cleaning their areas. You're going to notice that baby chicks love to run, flap and play and jump on top of things because maybe if you didn't put your lid on your brooder yet you might have seen one perching on the edge of it. But we like to put roost bars and little play perches in our grow up pens and in our aviary so we already get them started used to roosting on them. You'll notice that baby chicks all like to sleep in a pile when they're young but as they get older they're going to start deciding hey I like sleeping up here. Their natural instinct is to sleep high because it keeps them safe from predators and that's going to come in handy I'll show you shortly once you start introducing them into your flock. Now that your baby chicks are eight weeks old you're going to switch them from chick starter to grower feed. We use scratch and pet grower and when introducing new feed to your baby chicks or if you want to switch brands make sure that you mix your old old feed with your new feed because if the chicks see a food that they don't recognize they might refuse to eat it. Now that the baby chicks are two and a half to three months of age they are completely weaned off a heat source and they are ready to be integrated into your flock. This is when we sell our started pullets to go to their forever homes and our ones that go into our flock they have already begun the integration process by growing up in this grow up pen side by side to the flock and if you want to see the other two steps to our three step process check out this video here and you'll have the smoothest integration possible.
When introducing baby chicks to an established flock of hens, you're going to want to put the entire flock on grower feed right now. Adult hens eat layer feed, but the layer feed has too much calcium in it for baby chicks. It can damage their kidneys. Your adult laying hens will do just fine being on grower feed temporarily. They self-regulate how much calcium they need, so they will be fine if you just have oyster shell free choice on the side. You want to have oyster shell for calcium and grit for their digestion available alongside their feed at all times. Once your baby chicks have laid their first egg and they're officially an adult hen, then you can move the entire flock back onto layer feed. And because the baby chicks were used to sleeping in the grow up pen, if you have a hen house, they're not going to know to go in there. So every night you're going to manually place them on the roost bar. Some chicks can take up to two days to understand, some stubborn ones up to a week, but then they will know that's their home and go in there on their own. If you free range, you had your grow up pen in your chicken coop already, so once they start free ranging, they're already going to know to go back in the coop. You might just have to place them on your adult hen's roost bars for a few nights till they get the hint. And because the baby chicks were already trained to sleep on the roost bars in the grow out pen, you should have no problem with them wanting to roost. Just make sure that your roost bars are up higher than your nest boxes so your pullets don't decide to sleep in the nest boxes. But chickens desire to be up as high as possible so if your roost bars are higher than your nest boxes that shouldn't be a problem. Different breeds of chickens start laying their eggs at different ages. I've had chickens start as early as four months old laying eggs, but then I've had some breeds like French Marans or Silkies wait till they're nine months old to begin laying eggs. You'll know if your chicken's about to start laying eggs if they start squatting for you. They will squat down and their shoulder blades will stick out and that's them submitting to you like they're the rooster. They start this behavior when they're very close to laying eggs. And if you don't have chickens already laying, you can put fake wooden or ceramic eggs in your nest so they can see those and already get the hint like, oh, that's where I should lay it. If you already have chickens laying eggs, they will already see your other chickens' eggs in the boxes and take the hint. Once your pullet has laid her first egg and she has graduated to adult laying hen, you can do the happy dance, enjoy your eggs, and at this point you can put them back onto layer feed. For bedding, we use Eat on Hemp shavings in our coop. There's many ways that you can control your bedding. You can just clean it out whenever you see fit weekly, or you can utilize something called the deep litter method. If you do a quick Google search about it, you'll see how it works, is that the bedding is supposed to be turned over. They say chickens usually scratch it up and turn it over. Our chickens are lazy or don't do that, so as I see fit, what I do is I go in here and I just mix around the bedding. And then what you're going to do is top it off with more bedding. And it is completely odorless. The Eat on Hemp shavings neutralizes every odor. It smells good in here. And eventually you'll have great compost from this. And you get to fill it up pretty high. And that way you don't have to change your bedding out weekly. You can leave this for up to six months to a year at a time, depending how many chickens you have in your size coop. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope this answered a lot of your questions. If you have any more, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna link all related videos and products in the description. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.